really important part of beat mixing is actually mixing frequencies together and making sure that frequencies ain't clashing um, because that creates really muddy mixes. And what you have on most DJ mixes that you find out there today is a bank of knobs at the top end of the mixer. Um, and usually the top one will be called gain, which is a fancy word for volume. So if you turn that right down, there'll be no volume. But what we're interested in at the moment is these three, three knobs here for each individual channel, which are labeled low, mid, and high. Now it's very self-explanatory if you've got any kind of EQ on, on any system. It's, it's the same thing, but it's just on knobs here. Um, so yeah, the high end or the highs are going to cut out the, the high frequencies, like the cymbals in tracks. The mids are going to cut out, you know, the synth lines and the vocals. That's where that's that's the frequencies that, that those parts of uh, elements of tracks take up. And the bottom end is is the fun bit, the bass, the kick drum, and, and the, the the thing that makes people go crazy. So, you know, once you've got control of those those elements, you can you can then say, okay, the one the track that's going out, I don't want it to have any more vocals. I don't want that synth to be there, and I'll just kill the mids. Or you know, I don't want the hi hats to be going as hard anymore, so I'll drop it back. So. Let's stop talking about it and let's just see what they do when I play with them. So this is the highs. So I take all the hi-hats out now. So it becomes a duller track and I can, at this point, when I'm playing the next track, I can let the hi-hats from the next track taking over. So I'll bring them back in. And I want to take the synth out here, so let's just drop that whole synth line out. You can kind of hear it, but it's more in the top end frequency of that synth line. But the bass and kick drum is still there. And at this point, if I wanted to kill the kick drum, I wanted to kill the whole bass and leave everything else running, it will be like this. So all you've got now is the mid and the high. The beat's gone, the bass is gone, even though the bass is still in the track, but I've just killed it. So when you've got such control of each frequency, you can make your track sound, or your mixer sound really, really smooth. So let's, let's look at how EQ is used to adjust frequencies when you're mixing two tracks together. I'm gonna play, I've got two tracks set up, I've got them in loop and I've got them in sections of the record which are quite full, so there's lots of frequencies going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this one which has got the bass line, the synth line, the hi-hats, the kick drum, everything. And I'm slowly going to mix this one in. But what I'll do to begin with, just so it doesn't come in so harsh, I'm going to drop the bass of this and then start the mix. And you can hear that the hi-hats have come in. Now slowly, Oh, I can do it. I can do it. Suddenly as well. I'll do this as suddenly so you can really hear it. I've just changed the two bass lines. I'll just change them back. Change them slowly. Just adjusting to get it right. Now slowly, I'll just bring this out. Take the hi-hats out. So I'm slowly bringing the track out by, not just by simply using the volume, but by using volumes on frequencies. And that's essentially what EQ is. It's a volume over certain ranges of frequencies. Now if you watch DJs like Stacey Pullen or Derek May, they're the ones that do it the best. So that's using EQs to mix with. 